welcome to uh, the, the full day of payments at N. I am so excited to have all of you here. We'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, we had a great turnout yesterday for the half day. Um, but we're going to go ahead and run through, through some things, uh, announcements, etc., that we covered yesterday. Because there will be some new folks here today. First of all, um, super excited. Registration at 102. Um, hey. Huge turnout for the first time. So, that's awesome. Really glad to have you all here. Second, I want to mention and reiterate we have the code of conduct, any um, harassment, any discrimination policy up on the website. Um, you can go, it's at this link, it's linked from the home page. Please review that, please abide by it. Um, I want everyone to have uh, an enjoyable time at a professional conference. Um, and related to that and everything else that you might question, you might have, etc., uh, the folks in the red shirts, uh, there's one over there, he's in a different red shirt, don't talk to him, but they say staff on the back of them. Um, there's another one over here. We can answer your questions. I'll probably be wearing one later on today. Um, and uh, answer your questions if you have uh, anything you need to report, if you want to know where you can make a phone call, all these different kinds of things um, uh, folks in the red shirts can help with. The Wi-Fi, um, that's the SSID and key. They're down here at the bottom of the next few slides in case you're still trying to type. The main thing I would mention again is just that there's limited capacity there, so maybe hold it to one device on the Wi-Fi. Um, and if you're like updating, you know, pulling in some StarCraft updates or something, maybe do that on tethering, not on Wi-Fi. These are our social tags, so uh, the main uh, conference uh, Twitter handle, which you can mention, and then the um, hashtag that we're using for the conference. So as you tweet about this, as we talk about it, please do. We really want to grow this community. We want to uh, uh, put on an even bigger conference next year and do this again. Um, and we need to get the word out. It's, it's been difficult. It's been uh, challenging, I think, to get this community together. And we want to do more of this. And uh, it's been really fun to be with our people uh, yesterday and looking forward to it again today. There's a call workspace. It's actually called the ballroom. It's out here. Again, you can ask folks in the, in the uh, red shirts where that is. But uh, there's a nice quiet space off of the lobby. You can use it when you need to uh, sit down and work on your laptop and make a call. <laughs> and there's the social again. Because I'm going the wrong way. Um, I also want to mention. This door can feel a little awkward to go in and out of. Uh, there's another door up there um, with stairs down to the lobby, and actually the elevator also is up there. So if you want to enter and exit through there, you can also come down here. We won't, we won't judge you. Um, that's totally fine. But if you, if you want to make the street entrance and exits, there's, a, there's an entrance and exit up in the back. We are having the sessions recorded. Um, we really want to tell people that beforehand because we wanted them to come. Um, but we are going to get them up there, and uh, they're going to be on Concretes under uh, the sort of standard Creative Commons um, reporting license that Concretes uses. And we're excited to get them up there. We will let you know when they go live. And then the agenda is up on the website. Um, I'm going to reiterate it to you. Quick rundown on lunch. Um, it's at the Pit Restaurant. For those of you that went to Happy Hour last night, um, it's about the, it, you can basically see the pit from um, our office. So it's about almost exactly the same direction. Um, it is about the same distance. Um, we have, it's about a 10 minute walk. We encourage you to walk. Um, it should be beautiful today. Um, but we also have lift codes for anyone that needs them um, and for both going there and coming back. And we'll have folks with signs out there who can both uh, direct you and, and groups walking over there, and also uh, someone with a sign if you want to take a lift. And finally, uh, for announcements, I just want to thank our sponsors again. Um, we talked about them in depth yes, uh, yesterday, but EBNT, uh, local bank, um, is still doing actually some unique things in the payment space. Um, they're just down in Wilson, North Carolina. We've been enjoying interacting with them, and they were kind enough to sponsor the conference. Um, Google Pay, um, as we mentioned yesterday, uh, our support for, Spreetly support for Google Pay is now um, going into private data, so if you want to get on that list to help us test it out, definitely 
uh, let us know. SIGICH is our PCI DSS QSA, um, and um, we're super excited to have them here. Um, we've referred them out to uh, some of our different customers. I've heard good things back uh, from them as well. So definitely chat with SIGICH. There are people too, they get all of this stuff um, and, and deal with it regularly when they're running audits. And then, of course, really, um, we have uh, been super excited and super glad that we can sponsor and, and put on this, this first year of the conference. So, I've been giving you all these announcements. It's probably, probably be good to introduce myself. Um, my name is Nathaniel Talbot. I am the uh, CTO and one of the original co-founders of Spreely. Um, and <clears throat> I wanted to take a few minutes here before we get started with the the, the talks that you all came to see, and just talk a little bit why about why I'm excited to uh, put on this conference. Um, why I'm so excited that Spreely has kind of gotten to the point where we can go and put this on, and uh, a little bit of the history behind that. Before I do that, though, I want to uh, send a thank you and a shout out to two uh, people that have really helped make this possible. One is Helen. You will see her uh, out there. She has been tireless. The whole team has contributed, but these two people especially, Helen has been tireless in coordinating this, making sure we're all fed, making sure we're all in the right place at the right time, and all the stuff gets where, it needs, gets where it needs to go. We want her to be willing to do this again next year, so if you enjoy the conference, um, please stop by and let her know um, that, that uh, you uh, enjoyed it and appreciated it. Um, I know that, that she will appreciate and I also want to uh, send a shout out to Peter. We, he joined just back in February. We said, we've got this conference thing we're working on, and we don't actually have anyone signed up for it yet. And we're kind of hoping you, as our first uh, uh, sort of uh, marketing person, that you will uh, be able to help us get uh, attendees and registrants. Um, and, and we even gave him the option of, like, if you want, you can just push it back a year and we can wait. But he was super excited and he was super game. And most of you, uh, almost all of you are here directly or indirectly because of his efforts. As he said yesterday, he's the guy who emailed you um, and emailed you again. But we wanted you to come out. We want as many people here as possible. And Peter made so much of that uh, happen. So I want to thank him. So imagine that you are a Sumerian shepherd. <laughs> so in um, uh, uh, Sumeria was this very early civilization in the area of uh, modern day Iraq. And uh, some really interesting things arose out of the Sumerian civilization. And, um, if you were a Sumerian shepherd, say you were a really successful one. As a matter of fact, you, you kind of had sheep coming out of your ears. You had more sheep than you knew what to do with. And um, right around you, you had neighbors, other, other folks doing agricultural things around you. And, and over the hill, there was another farmer who was uh, uh, growing wheat. And you knew you could get bushels of wheat. And you wanted to do a business deal. You're an entrepreneur trying to, you need wheat, he needs sheep. So let's, this sounds kind of like a game at the time, but he, um, <laughs> but he, um, uh, you want to figure out how to do this deal, but the wheat's not ripe yet, and you need to finish raising the sheep, and, um, and, but you want to go ahead and agree. So you need a record of this. So you both go down to the local town, and you um, talk to uh, the clay artisan there. Um, and the clay artisan helps you out, and actually goes and... Um, helps you out with these, uh, craft some of these clay tokens. So uh, each uh, token, you would have had tokens to represent the different commodities. So you would have had specific tokens for wheat and for sheep, and they would have been in different denominations. So uh, one that represented one sheep, one that represented five, one that represented 10. So you get these tokens, you get them fired, and then you do your deal with your farmer friend. And you each kind of get your pile of tokens that represents the deal. So say it's 35 sheep for 28 bushels of wheat. You each get piles of tokens that represent those amounts. And uh, while you're doing that, the, the clay artisan is out there um, crafting a hollow clay ball. 
And when you've got your deal done, maybe he crafts two of them and, and one for each of you. He actually, in the outside of the clay ball, he goes in and, and, and marks the, the terms of the deal. And then there's a hole in the top of this clay ball, and you each take your representation of the, the amount that you agreed to, and you pour it into the top of your clay ball. And he seals it off, and he fires that clay ball. Now you have a representation of the deal. Um, and if there's any kind of dispute later on when the meat ripen, ripens or when the, the lambs are, um, uh, have matured, you can break those open if you need to and compare notes and, and someone else can arbitrate that dispute. So the fascinating thing is that this is actually one of the earliest examples we have of payments technology. Um, these are the prototypical payments engineers trying to figure out how to solve problems that they've had in their businesses and their lives. And the things that stopped there, right? So those tokens, those clay tokens, they eventually became coinage. And these are shekels, and, but we're all super familiar with coins. Here's a thing that we use every day in our life. And, and uh, we can trace them back to these clay tokens. And that um, clay ball, that actually became what we think of as a, as a seal, or uh, sort of the modern representation of that would be a signature. Uh, hey, I agree to this. This is, this is uh, I put my name on this, and um, you can use this as a future record of the deal that was done. So um, these are like things that we take for granted, but it actually goes even further than that. Get this. So the clay tokens have these representations of like different amounts of, uh, of commodities. That then becomes this uh, ability, and, and folks take that and they start making records of counts and accounting in clay, and they, the, you have these numeric systems, and so you get sort of the first pass at numeric systems. That then becomes written language in cuneiform. And so out of payments technology, you end up with writing. You end up with civilization. And it comes from um, this desire to be able to do commerce and to do it um, efficiently and to do it well. So I take two um, sort of conclusions from this. The first one is that um, payments technology and payments engineering, it actually matters. It matters for the world, it matters for history, it matters for civilization. Commerce is, is one of the fundamental ways that we interact with each other. Two people with uh, things of value that they've created, being able to exchange that uh, to mutual benefit is huge. And it underlies our, our, our ability to relate to, to, to have lots of wonderful um, things and food and, and other things to be able to produce um, in, in specialized ways and then exchange that production. And payments engineering is actually, uh, and payments technology is a key idea, uh, part of that. And it has a, the potential to impact the world like on an ongoing basis in ways beyond just payments and commerce. So I'm super excited to be gathered here talking about it as a thing in its own right because I want to be mindful of it. I want us all mindful. I want us to be able to talk about it and communicate about it and say this is something important that we're doing. The second conclusion that I kind of draw from this is no, like people don't get into payments engineering and payments technology on purpose. <laughs> we just have some shepherds who wanted to like a shepherd who wanted to trade some sheep. He wasn't trying to create new payments technology. He wasn't trying to do payments engineering. And when we started Spreely, we weren't trying to do payments technology. We just wanted to make subscription management better. We just wanted to be able to charge 40 bucks a month for uh, software as a service. That was our only goal. And so we, we went, we did that for three or four years and had some success. Um, uh, also had plenty of struggles and we accidentally created payments technology inside of that. We stumbled into it. Um, we, we, we started doing it, and eventually we pulled that out and said, oh, maybe other people will want this. Um, maybe we can pull this out, and we pivoted the company and focused it in on payments technology, but that's not where we started. We didn't do it on purpose. I'm not that smart. Um, and the, the, the 
challenging thing was when we started doing payments technology, especially since we didn't do it on purpose, we had no clue how to learn about these things. Where do we get information? Where's the community? Where are the other people who, like us, have stumbled into doing payments technology and payments engineering and payments product? How do we find them? Where are they? Where's the community? And I want to take a little uh, diversion here and talk a little bit about um, my journey into uh, the programming language Ruby. So this is uh, the back of the RubyConf shirt. I had this shirt. This is not a picture of my shirt. I don't have cool dinosaur stickers. But um, back in 2001, um, I had just started getting into Ruby. It was actually in late 2000. And um, I was super excited about it. The first English language book about Ruby, uh, the Ruby programming language, had been published. And I found the mailing list. And the English language mailing list, even the creator of the language, who was Japanese, he would get on there and he would talk about the language. He would answer questions. The folks who wrote the book would be on there. Um, it was an amazing community. I learned so much. And then eventually, we decided to put a conference on. And we gathered um, uh, lots of people from all over the place into that conference. Um, it was amazing. We even managed to pull the creator of the language over from Japan. That was one of the reasons we put the conference on. And, and hang out with him. And, and that continued on. I went to the first 11 or 12 Ruby conferences uh, consecutive. I was a little bit, little bit of a fanboy. Okay. Um, but it, it changed the course of my career. It changed in some ways the course of my life. Um, and I learned so many things from that community. And when I started doing payments, I couldn't find the same thing. And so um, I think part of the reason for that is that we don't get into this on purpose. We don't go out and say, oh, I'm doing payments technology. A lot of times we don't even realize we're doing it. Um, and so we, don't, we have a whole community around it. And one of the goals of Payments at Penn is to really bootstrap that community. We want to um, gather folks in, and we want to start building a community of people doing payments technology, payments engineering. Um, and, and payments product. And my request to you is that as you go through the conference, as you hear the, the great content that our speakers have prepared, as you um, uh, spend time networking with your peers, maybe this is the first time um, you know, you've been able to be in a room uh, talking about your job and, some, and you don't have to explain the difference between a payment gateway and a merchant account. Um, that's kind of amazing because, it, and, and you talk about like payment networks and the other person doesn't play to. Um, it, these are our people and I want to figure out how, uh, I want you to help us figure out how, what, what's next. How do we build a community out of this? Is it, is it a Slack? Is it a uh, podcast? Is it webinars? No, it's not webinars because <laughs> <laughs> it's Maybe it's something like a webinar, but we're not telling it that. Um, but, uh, you know, what, what is, uh, how can we build this community? Is it a mailing list? Do people even do mailing lists anymore? I don't know. But um, we want to discover that. We want you to, to interact and, and tell us like, what we can do that would be helpful. Is it local meetups? Can we find enough payment people in local areas to rub together and build a community um, that can drive local meetups? Maybe, maybe if we spread the word and find them and tell them, oh, actually, you're doing payments engineering. You should come hang out with us because you can uh, learn things from us and we can, we can uh, learn things from you. So in summary, um, just my two conclusions. First of all, this stuff matters. Um, and we can have an impact for, for good. We can have an impact for ill. We need to be mindful of, of what we're building, of the longer term impact of the things that we're doing and, and thinking about that and thinking about um, the, the kinds of impacts that we're having as we're doing payments engineering. And it's great to be able to gather and talk about and then secondly, help us build this community. Help us figure out like, what's next. Help us um, fill in the, the details of, of how this community fleshes out over the next year and over the coming years. So now I want to uh, welcome John Duff up onto the stage. He's going to get set up. Um, and uh, speaking of community, one of the, I think, the best examples of uh, Open source payments technology that we've had to date has been active merchants. And that was a huge impact for us at Screedly. So I'm really psyched to have John come up and talk about the early days of payments at Shopify.